Welcome to another video tutorial from 2dgamartguru.com. Today I'm working in Affinity Designer to create a dot to dot illustration. I prepared a sketch. I'm gonna make a unicorn for my granddaughter. She loves unicorns and I'll include it in my weekly letter to her. I give the sketch a wide overlay and turn down the opacity. That way I get a better contrast with the black line art I'm planning to put on top. I use the pen tool to create notes in the key positions. At this stage I don't worry too much about lines or curves. You can curve with the pen tool. I'm just quicker when I create straight lines and curve them later. Once I created the outer shape, I go in with the node tool, add nodes where I need to, delete excess nodes and curve the lines. To make it more visible, I add a stroke to this line so you can see what I'm doing. I curve the horn as well as the ears and then go in with the node tool. The smooth does help. I like to use that to get really nice flowing lines. The sketch is just an idea. I don't need to stick to it 100%. It just helps me to create the basic design. Sometimes it makes more sense, especially with the main, to stray from the sketch and vary my curves a little bit more. Sometimes it makes sense to delete your initial nodes to create a cleaner version. For the snout, I don't need those excess two nodes. One curve will do just fine. So that's the initial outline done. This will be the line to be traced with the dots. And now I can add details to it. I go back to the pen tool, create my lines, and this time I adjust the pressure curve. I want them to taper towards the end. Affinity Designer remembers your last setting. All the lines I'm creating now have the same setting as the tapered line. When I duplicate lines and scale them, I want them to be consistent, so I turn the scale with object off. You might have noticed I duplicate a lot. I'm working with a mouse on this one, so I'm not hand drawing each line. Duplicating, moving and reusing seems like the faster way. In this case, the lines for the ear need a consistent look, but I want them thicker at the top. So rather than mess with the pressure curve, I just duplicate the line and connect the top node. The lines up there are consistent and both taper down towards the bottom. I will fast forward at this point because I am just placing more lines. It's a repetitive process of filling the design, making sure I cover most of the lines of my sketch.
when I connect lines, it's easy to duplicate the line and then just move one of the nodes, keep the second node stationary. When working with multiple pressure curves, I usually try and save my pressure curve so I can easily go back to it and reuse it. At this stage, Affinity Designer does not offer the option to save a stroke setting. A pressure curve, the width, the color cannot be saved directly, but you can select the object and save the style. Going into the style panel, click on the menu icon, there is the option to save a style from an object. And while I'm talking about saving, remember to save your design. At this stage I call the line art done. It's time to edit the outline. I set it to a dashed line with a really low number for the first set so I get a dotted line. I lower the opacity and I hide my sketch. I won't be needing that anymore. It's time to add the numbers. One idea I had was to create a custom brush to have even spacing between my dots with the number. So I create a dotted line, a circle with a white outline. The brushes work on black and white, so I turn the dotted line into a white and have my custom brush. I export that to PNG and bring it back in as a textured intensity brush into Affinity Designer. I go into the brush panel, select the category I want to save it in and add a new custom brush via the menu. I make it a new textured intensity brush, selecting the PNG I just created. Scroll all the way down and there is my brush. I want to set it to repeat and I increase the size a little bit and then assign this brush to my outline. It does not really make sense. I have dots now in places where they are evenly spaced but they don't really make too much sense. Time to go back to the dotted lines and place the numbers manually. I set the stroke back to a dashed slash dotted line and then create a circle, give it a black outline. I need to make it solid now, it's set to dashed and a wide fill for this one. I'll add a number inside. I use the text tool and add my number. I choose the 88 because it has the maximum widths in most fonts. If I scale this one down and it fits, I can edit it later. I make sure it is set to centered. I center it to the circle. And then comes mistake number two of the day. I thought it would be smart to create a symbol and be able to change the font later on. Spoiler alert, it did not work. Skip this step, don't make it a symbol. I duplicate the numbers along the outline. I try to position them in sensible spots, something the even spacing could not do. I break the curve at the start and go all the way up to the ear. I use the node tool to select the node, click on break curve and then move one end all the way up, add more nodes, curve the lines in between the nodes to match my initial line art and delete the black lines I created earlier.
Now it's time to change the numbers. I go in with the text tool and edit the 88 to the matching one, two, three. I'll speed the video up at this spot again. I'm just changing numbers. And now comes the point where I realized that my smart move to use symbols did not quite work. I tried to turn the sync back on, change the font and just the one symbol would change, not all of them. I could not figure out what happened, why it happened. I will not figure it out in this recording. I turn the symbols back into normal shapes by detaching and then deleting the symbol. Now all my circles and numbers are just plain groups. I can ungroup them and have a text and a circle, which is probably what I should have done in the beginning. But yeah, I will work on the symbol issue and try and work out where I went wrong. For now, this is the design with a few added bits of decoration copied onto a printable size. In my case, that's an A4. When I print designs like this, I select everything, group it and rasterize my group and print off the raster version. I make sure I don't save this file. This is just for printing. As soon as the print job's done, I revert it back in order not to accidentally save it. I have created a few in the past. There's a dog, a balloon. I created a ship with a crab and some fish as decoration. For my grandson, I did a monster dinosaur as a coloring page give it a try it's a lot of fun and the kids enjoy it if you enjoyed this video and learned something new please subscribe to my channel turn on the notification leave a like and i will see you again soon